hustling, every day I'm 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 every day I'm every day I'm hustling. Who you suckers think you're tripping with? Yes, I'm the boss. Sam 45, white on white, that's Rick Ross. Welcome everybody, welcome everybody, welcome to the best construction channel in the land. My name is Upili Legon Mpemba and I'm the girl that likes to play and work in the dirt. And today I, I had my face on and I decided, you know what, let me finally do the CIDB. I've gotten a couple of questions um, with people kind of trying to figure out what they need to be doing um on the cidb website not on the CRE, cidb website what i figured is that we can kind of all follow the instructions right because they've got a couple of instructions on the on the on the website but i realized that the questions were mainly based on just you know what is what what does what does each thing mean so i thought you know what let me come um and let's do what it do so today we're doing cidb um we're going to do the gradings um we're going to do um, I'm going to touch on just, you know, like what you need to be doing for grade one to three, because I think if you've gone to um, grade three, then you kind of know what you're doing and you kind of know how to navigate. You know, you wouldn't have moved from one to three, you know. So let's get on this video. And CIDB, man, is the Construction Industry Development Board. Um, and that basically means that it's an industry. Um, it's 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 a public entity. I think it's sector three, sh schedule three A. I think that's what they call it. It's um, public entities that are created in the aim of kind of alleviating a certain pressure within the industry in order for it to kind of streamline better. This board is basically all about kind of regulating the industry and kind of slotting people into like the different classes. So if we were to kind of make an example of what the CIDB is, CIDB is like, um, I'm not going to say it's CAO. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if we can use, I can kind of use that, but it basically kind of just... It, it, it kind of just determines where you need to be and which people you are supposed to be competing with. So it kind of wants to alleviate any pressure from the different kind of grades and the different type of contractors and especially SMMEs. So they kind of developed a framework where you are kind of slotted with your peers. Like, I think the first thing that we'd start with is um, why register with the CIDB. Um, a plain and simple answer is that you won't be able to navigate this industry without being CIDB graded, especially within public procurement. So if you are looking to, to, to do business with the government, then it is by law that you are registered with the CIDB. And obviously, if then you're gonna go to um, whole building, then you'll have to be um, registered with the NHBRC. So including the, S the, the CIDB. So it's not like you can kind of just, you know, choose, I ah, know I wanna go to the NHBRC, you know, you have to be it's the same thing as you can't really um you can't really be part of the cidb if you are not part of the csd which is the central database and then you can't be part of the cidb or you can't be part of the nhbrc if you are not if you are not part of um the cidb so what i would say is when you're kind of just starting out you're kind of figuring out a way on which kind of accreditations to get or um, what type of things that outside you, you know, registering your business and knowing that your business now is live, um, what kind of the, the different type of certifications or the different type of keys that you need to kind of navigate and operate within the market will definitely be your CSD. I think we've touched on that in a couple of videos before. Will definitely be your CI, uh, your CIDB also. Um, and then obviously depending on where you want to go, NHBRC. And then obviously if it's engineering, then it will be your EXAs and all of that. So you know, like there are boards um, within construction that um, that that govern the way that the industry works, and it kind of regulates the way that the industry works. So this particular board, um, which is the CIDB, is responsible for kind of creating, putting people within their slots and making sure that the right people are getting the right jobs. But other than that, the, 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 the people with the same capacities are kind of operating within the same, um, within, within the same grade. Because now um, you can't be putting a grade nine, someone who can kind of, you know, um, before... I think this was cre this was created um, in order for people to not you know people that have 
better capacity or capabilities within the market to to not suffocate the smaller ones so they kind of the smaller ones they kind of class you into a certain a certain grade and then you guys kind of compete there and then the bigger ones are classed in a different grade as well and those grades are dependent on two things which would be um your capacity in terms of your financial capa capacity resources and capabilities and then the um, the second one would be um your experience and how far and and what is the uh, what is the level of works that you can do you know like for instance you can't just start um you can't just start a construction company and then be like you know what i'm going to build another gateway you know you have to kind of work towards being able to 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 handle a construction project like that not just not just not in terms of just skills but you know projects like that are going to require a great amount of money you know um to um to 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 kind of put out i think it, it talks about um what was that um what was that company um that was awarded that central project um but now it's actually they're actually finding out now that they actually have been in a loss um just a little bit of background if you don't know about that story um they got awarded a central project and um basically now only to find out that um they do not actually have the financial capacity even though they are within um, a joint venture with a Chinese company but um, their capacity by themselves does not really prove um, to be viable um, or their financials don't prove viable to be able to take on a project like that and and the 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 background now is how can a company that has been in a loss for a couple of years um, kind of been awarded a, a contract to that magnitude so it's 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 these things that um it's it's financial capacity and um and th that company definitely has the 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 skills um to put to take a project like that you know they can definitely br uh, put on the manpower but in terms of like their financials it's not looking really good so we can't we can't really just go on skills this is at the end of the day construction is a business you're not just taking paint and you know you have to every project has to have a certain budget and in order for you to prove profitable and good at what you do you're not you're not only just going to be in the mind but you also have to show a proven record of you being able to be good there by the books so CIDB um, basically that's what they assess um, when they put you into um, different grades because then what would happen is um, once a tender goes out um, uh, the SOE um, will have to depict which grade of contractor they would need for that tender so so you know kind of to make things fair so it streamlines the whole process the SOE is going to be able to say this is this is an amount this is this is what needs to be done like this is the project that needs to be done it requires a person that um can a budget to probably this amount and would uh, would have to have the financial footing of this amount um but also have the skills to be able to do this and this and this and this in these sectors and and specialties so this thing goes in two ways right so you have your grading which would be um class one um to nine i like to call class one and uh, not class one man grade one to nine grade one would be the job seekers those are the people that uh, are still kind of finding themselves out you know like when you initially saying you know i want to be a contractor i want to be registered the, with the cidb but i haven't really done any work you will fall within the job seekers which would be your grade one so there um you basically need they don't really check for your financials it's just basically everything that you need um obviously being um part of the csd uh, because that information is going to kind of carry through um to the cidb um and then and then you kind of register there are steps by steps i will put it on here but i'll also link the video in the description box i think there's a video that cidb does um which kind of takes you like step to step like i won't do it justice i think cidb really does a great job in taking you through the steps um so i'll link the video or i'll put the steps in here but with the with the grade one it's it's basically really simple um you go into the cidb website um you register the only thing that you have to do is one you you going you're going to have to be registered with the csd but you know if you are taking that if you are taking that opportunity and you want to be doing business with the government you have to be registered in the csd so that's basically your first point of reference 
So coming from the CSD kind of just alleviates the pressure of having to put all your information again because it just brings it through. It brings through that information and then you kind of just start with the, um, with the process. The one thing that I would say that you have to be alert of is that you cannot make payments out of outside of that website. I've gotten a lot of people saying that they're failing with um, with the CIDB regist um, registration and that's because you are not using um, the, the debit or uh, manual EFT um, options that they have on the CIDB website. So you have to use, you have to use, you have to make the payment within the CIDB website while you're making your, your application. But what I've also realized is, is that a lot of people, you'll find that, you know, like you register this year and then you kind of just, you know, you, you get lazy or whatever, whatever. And then the next time you try and register, they say that you have registered before. I think the best way to do um, to kind of go into that is to um, get your CRS number. Simple. If it's not on your email or you're using a different email, just call the CIDB website. Like they are really quick, bruh. Like it's not it's not even one of those. You know, I'm gonna wait. Call center for a long time. Like you kind of you know they 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 take you through and they give you the CRS number really quick because once you get the CRS number, then you'll be able to regenerate and do all of that other jazz. So going back to the grades. So. Grade would be grade one to nine. I think it starts at about 200,000 to about 130 million and then um, above. And then with the class, it will be the different classes. So what are the different classes? What do they mean? I remember when I started off in construction, I used to see like you'll find, you'll find people saying grade nine, GE, MM. And you're just like, what? the hell is all of that and you know like no one actually takes the time to say you know this is what it means and all of that it's just like it's just a lot it's just a lot and you're just like yo will i ever get to a point where now i've got all of these capital letters um that kind of mean that i'm a better contractor than others you do you do it's not that great like it's not it's not like a certification that you've got because you know i am i've worked so hard it basically says when you are going onto the CIDB website in order to get graded, right? So let me make an example. So a, an SOE will probably say, okay, this is what they need. Um, this is this is this is the job. Um, this is the capacity of the job. The person that does this job has to be able to afford this amount of money or work around a project with this amount of money. That person would have to be skilled to this um, level, and 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 this job will comprise of different areas of specialties. So you'll find people that are specializes in um, that specialize in electric, people that specialize in just the general building, um, people that specialize in um, the water and, and the plumbing. You know, so basically the CE will definitely be um, specialities when it comes to roads and dealing with material like steel, uh, concrete, rock. So, you know, like it, it, it kind of, it, you, you don't have to know it off by heart. It kind of just defines it there. You can apply for as many, as many as you want. Just know that each one you're going to have to pay for. So like, for instance, you get um, the CE, which is the civil engineering and the, and those would be um, uh, working with materials such as rocks, concrete, um, you know, like civil engineering aspects. And then you'll get the electrical engineering works and that would be your EB. So EB will fall into a different spectrum, which would be um, installation, extension, um, modification, you know, like of, of, of electrical work. So if you are into electricity, you'd be a grade five EB, you know, so that's how it works. Some people will have a lot of specialities with, uh, with under one construction company. You'd find that they'd be, there would be a um, grade five CE, EB, EP, which is infrastructure. E so, you know, like it's, it's different. If you want more of that, let me know. I'll do a video just describing each, each one. So, um, it's not that complicated. It just basically means what can you afford? What can you do? What's your capacity and what's your speciality? Okay. So how to go onto the website, key things that I I'd, I'd want you to know, kind of, um, going into the website, it would be definitely good at definitely get it um cidb is 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 by law so definitely um get it um um have at least about 450 
you know to kind of register to register on your cidb just to just to make sure that you do it once because with the grade one the nice thing about it is that you can do it like online and the registration is done online and it's done same time so it would be nice that um when you are ready to register you also have um the financial muscle to kind of of, of go into that um, um make sure that you are doing it in a very safe space because it also pertains a lot of like financial stuff putting in your card details and all of that so make sure that um you are kind of in a safe space or using a safe a safe um a safe computer or whatever whatever you can't it's not something that you can just do when you know and go because it also pertains a lot of your personal and intricate information about your business so which grade and which class and which grade is 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 based on definitely your capacity and your capacity of how you want to be working and the work that you've done um and it's not something that you kind of say mm, you know what i want to be a grade five or i want to go into a certain speciality what i normally say when people ask me that is that um public entities will normally kind of divide the scope of the works um, and so your mechanical and your civil will normally be like 10% and then your electrical will go into 15 and then the rest will kind of go into plumbing and fire prevention. So where you should you should be going um, is, is, is always based on, you know me, if you're going to ask me um, a random question about Pili, where should I be going? If you're going to ask me that question, then you shouldn't be in this industry. You shouldn't be here. You don't know what you're doing you know um you, you you it's like going to varsity and asking the person that is doing your registration oh, okay so what am i studying what are you here for you know what are you good at um how did you pass what's your capacity what are your capabilities do you have the resources to be doing a diploma a degree you know like it 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 all depends you have to have a concrete plan on what you are doing first before you start asking other people um questions what what where do your talents lie do they lie in electrical because you also like in as much as we want to be going into industries that we're not really well first in, but we also want to to be good at those things you don't want to go there and not know and on top of that not be good at it that's like the worst thing that could happen i would rather a person that does not know you know that doesn't know how to operate but is good at something like they know what they're good at and and the things and when you slot them into their spaces they you know like because now you don't want to be teaching someone from grade zero you know so the the construction projects um uh, are 100 percent general building is always the largest one and then it will be your 10 to 15 percent depending on on your civil electrical um engineering work um fire prevention and plumbing so it it's 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 kind of dependent general building is obviously like the 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 largest one it is the building so but it doesn't mean that it also has a lot of the money a lot of people will think that just because something holds a high percentage it means that it generates a lot of money yes a lot of money is going through um is 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 going through that arena um at that certain amount of point but it doesn't mean that the engineers and the and the mechanics and the electrical people are not making money they just might not you don't have to be employing 20 people but the ones that are getting paid are doing solid work and are getting paid good money for it so it's not it's not always about quantity you know it's it's also about quality speciality um and and at at what cost can you do the work not price cost at what cost um can you do the work we win with cost here we don't win with pricing i always preach this we win with cost we don't win with pricing so before i before i i, I go on to another 30 minute video i think i'll leave you guys there thank you for coming on to another episode of the construct um my name is apili Leg uh ooh, my name is apili legan in pemba and you are welcome to another episode goodbye Spinning wheels, wheels.
seen them 22, we in room 222. I touch work like I'm convertible bird, bird. I got distribution, so I'm converting the work, work. In the MIA, yeah, yo, them rich off, hey, yo. Steady slanging, hey, yo. My shit been banging, hey, yo. Every day I'm hustling, every day I'm hustling. Every day I'm hustling, every day I'm hustling. Every day I'm hustling, every day I'm hustling.